I want to begin today's video by setting the scene for you. I want you to imagine that you are a completely law abiding citizen in every way. You have never committed a crime before and you're just an all around good person. And you end up with a seven year prison sentence. What is this seven year prison sentence for you ask? Well, we'll get into that very shortly in a moment. And you're in prison with other people who have been convicted of crimes. And as you're sat around, each person is sharing or bragging about what they got into prison for. And some of these are quite heinous crimes. And you can't believe what you're hearing, some of these crimes that are being spoken about. And you're sat there saying, or thinking to yourself, how on earth did I get here? Well, what is the crime that we're talking about today, which carries a seven year maximum sentence, which has just passed, this law has just passed. Again, we'll, I'll show you the evidence because you're not going to believe it in, unless I show you. This is a new law that has just passed as of the 1st of April, and no, it wasn't an April Fool's joke, just two days ago. This is a new hate speech law in Scotland. So if you live in Scotland, you are now under this new hate speech law where, and I'll give you an example. I've, I've got a lot for you here today, but I pulled out one example. And this is from Siobhan Brown, the SNP Community Safety Minister. And she was asked for an example of something that could be considered to carry quite a hefty sentence. And it says, for example, calling a transgender woman he instead of the pronouns which align with their gender identity would be considered a serious criminal offence. And we're going to get into a lot more of this in a moment, but I was just looking through what actually happened because I wanted to get into the details. I wanted to know what happens if, for example, someone uses this against you for, you know, they make a claim against you that isn't true. There's no evidence. There was no one there. Perhaps it was just you and them. And let's say that they called the police and said you deliberately misgendered them. What happens in this case? Well, I thought perhaps it would be overlooked for no evidence. Why? Because we look at a lot of crimes that take place. Most of them these days are just not investigated. You know, some serious crimes like when I had my van stolen and when I've had crime against me, the police said there just wasn't enough evidence. A witness is not enough. You need CCTV, you need DNA, you need all this stuff these days. So I thought, well, it's probably going to be the same thing. So what happens then if there was a uh, claim of a crime being committed, it says here, and I quote, the police would investigate, which would open a file on your record. Even if nothing is found, the file won't disappear and will be filed as a non-crime hate incident. This may be used for future cases if there are other complaints against the individual. This is what I've been talking about for a long time. And this is really, really worrying. Really worrying indeed. Let's go to the shared screen, uh, shared screen a moment here. Now, this is how it started <laughs> on the 1st of April. This was JK Rowling being uh, investigated for police uh, by police for misgendering. We'll talk about how that ended in a moment. But now there's... <laughs> It's just been concluded, the investigation, but we'll get there, we'll get there. So now they, uh, another thing that I find very interesting is the police force. When we talked about, and again, you know me, and I need to give a, a quick clarification here. You all know me very well. I have friends of all races, all skin colors, whatever you want to say, all religions from around the world. I treat everybody the same, no matter what. But I give you facts and I give you figures, but I also give you my own opinion. And when we talked about the first minister, Hamza, 
and the speech that he gave really, and again, I'm, I'm quoting him. He said, the biggest problem with Scotland is um, there's too many white people in positions of power. And he went on this massive rant saying, this guy's white, this person's white, this person's white, and we need to get these people out, right? But we looked at the statistics. Again, we're just looking at statistics and data and people report the videos and they get pulled down from YouTube. People report the videos because I'm saying, hold on, this is the statistics. Scotland is a majority white country. And again, we as white people don't mind being called white. You can say Caucasian whenever you want. People don't really care. But that's what I said. Scotland, I'm not Scottish, but I was just trying to give context that Scotland is a majority white country. So it's not race. He was you know, trying to say everyone was race. It was a racist country. Scotland was a racist country. He's the leader of the country because everyone in positions of power is white. That's not the case. It's just based on the demographics and the, it's nothing to do with racism or discrimination. It's just that most people are white. That's it. It's not as if it was 100% white people in all these um, pieces of power. So then when I keep seeing all these images of Scotland and the police force, and they say that this is a more representative pic picture, for example, that is not representative. I'm sorry. I know people might be offended by that and get upset when I say these things. That is not representative of Scotland. There... <laughs> but anyway, here we go. So this was the external liaison then, and they went through and th this was just passed in the Hate Crime and Public Order Scotland Bill. Now remember, this was actually passed initially in 2021, and this is now an update to it to make um, these prison sentences, basically. Hate crime is the phrase used to describe behaviour which is both criminal and based on prejudice why the bill was created. They've got all these reasons why it was created, but let me tell you the reason it was created. I just went straight over to the United Nations and I typed it into their search. Here it is. United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, International Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Racial Discrimination. Scotland didn't come up with this. It wasn't from Scotland. It was the usual people. Again, it's the United Nations. It's these organizations that are pushing this through. And remember, this takes a long time. This bill took five years just to get passed in 2021 from when it was initially conceived in 2016. Now, fast forward to 2024, three years later, they've now pushed through some of the stuff they couldn't get through before. And that's really all this is. Now, if we go back to the share here. Now, this was put out a week ago and I wanted to wait for this so I could talk about it at the same time once this hate speech bill was passed. A Scotland, this is absolutely mind blowing. And this is from the, in the Telegraph, okay? So the telegraph.co.uk. A police Scotland plan to stop investigating, please read this along with me, to stop investigating all crimes risks helping criminals, the national force has admitted for the first time. Police Scotland is refusing to say which offences were not investigated during a pilot in Aberdeen, as it argued that doing so would provide lawbreakers with a major tactical advantage. The pilot was judged a success and used as a basis for a national, rail, uh, national roll out. I honestly can't believe what has happened to Scotland. The hate crime bill. This controversial hate crime bill comes into force next month. Now, this is the key thing. I'm taking you back because I want to give context to what's just happened. Comes into force next month. And they've admitted this could create additional demand and create a resource implication for police. What happens if you are, and I gave you this example as well, the lady with her, her little baby, she's just getting out of the car and that gang jumps out of their car and steals her car, knocking her and the baby to the ground. The police don't investigate because the danger is already over. How on earth is this a country that we are living in now? Someone tell me, because it's absolutely crazy to me that they're not investigating, but if, if it's a hate crime or someone misgenders someone 
all of a sudden they roll out the red carpet and you see just police, <laughs> I'm exaggerating here, but SWAT teams, helicopters, you got people fast roping in, smashing through windows, but you know, knocking doors in. I mean, this is crazy. It, and, and again, it's nothing to do with what is actually the crimes. They, they've, with the help of the government, they've created all these crimes. And another part of this article actually talks about somewhere, it, it, it doesn't give the details. So it says that they, they need to c collect all these crime statistics and there's gonna be millions invested in collecting crime statistics. I've got them here somewhere. But yeah, the freedom of information request on criminals who commit violent or sexual, we have to, we have to do the sexual like that, for the algorithm, if uh, right, if they commit crimes like that against people or minors, they will not, you can check this out, they will not collect, or if they do collect, they will not release that data. But they will collect data because you want to know, well, who, are the, who, who was it? Who is committing these crimes? Let's profile. Oh, no, you can't. That's discriminatory in nature. Well, which, where they come from, which countries in general, then you can block those countries from coming in. If you've got, say, this many cases, right, and you've got this many that are from native people, I mean, I don't know what it is, but anyway, you could say, well, this amount here is from one country because they have different values there, they have um, different belief systems, culture, the culture is completely different, and uh, uh, as a result, we're having a lot more crime. Let's just use that as an example. No, this data is not collected. And if you do an FOI request, Freedom of Information, they will not release that data. There's been loads of them. I know a lot of you have emailed in to tell me and you've shown me the response. They said they will not because it's discrimination. It's not discrimination. This is just collecting the facts. Police Scotland hate crime training was leaked. This is quite interesting as well. Police Scotland officers will investigate actors and comedians if a complaint is made under new hate crime laws. Now, here's another issue. There's all these forums now of the, you know, LGBTQ whatever community where people have been saying, here's a, a comedy show, this guy normally does, um, you know, a routine on us. Okay, so we need to, people to go. Who's going? Yeah, I'll go. Yeah, I'll go. Okay, great. When he says to them, make sure you record it. Um, you're not allowed to record, but make sure you discreetly record. Then call the police and show them the footage. And that's how we get them arrested. And this is how we stop. This is madness. This is absolute crazy of what is going on here. And I can't believe this is happening in my lifetime. Any material regarding, regarded as threatening and abusive under this new law through public performance, here it is, even of a play. <laughs> it's not just comedy, but a play. And the chief constable that's responsible for overseeing all of this just decided to take early retirement. Isn't that a coincidence? No, I don't think so. Police Scotland has promised that it will investigate every hate crime complaint reported. Every single one, but they won't, they won't investigate real crimes. Despite the force adopting a proportionate response approach to other crimes. It's crazy what is going on here. So let's get on to the JK Rowling thing and, and what happened. Well, here we go, here we go. Let's go, let's go to here. Okay, let's start here. Brown added that police in Scotland had received a lot of training in the last year around the new law, which came into effect on Monday, which actually isn't true. They didn't receive a lot of training. They received two hours and only half the force did it. And that she felt confident they would execute the law properly. There's a very high threshold, which is in the act, which would be up to police Scotland. And what would uh, have to be said online or in person would have to be threatening and abusive. Hold on, so it's up to the police even though half of them, it might be more by now, but even though half of them haven't done the training. So they would dictate or decide what's threatening and abusive. Does that make any sense? Everybody, and, and, and although she supported everybody's freedom for expression, 
It was not acceptable that people in our society should live in fear or to be made to feel like they don't belong. Look, I don't disagree with that, okay? I, I, I don't disagree with that at all. But what I disagree with is how this new law can be misused against people. Now, she also added that Rowling was not entitled to make people feel uncomfortable and to misgender someone. Now, again, if you haven't followed this whole thing, because I really haven't, because I'm not really interested, to be honest, there's one thing I distinguish between listening to a few arguments that were going on was that the problem seems to, to lie in when people say gender, right? So they're saying now that gender is no longer male and female, they're saying via community and society, it has evolved. And by the collective consciousness, it is now fluid. So that's why they're talking about gender fluid. And you might hear that expression a lot. So this is, I think, where the issues are coming in. And I've seen some of these posts by JK Rowling. I was just reading them today. And I think the issue that she's falling into and a lot of other people are, are using the word gender. But what I can't see anywhere is the word sex. So there doesn't really seem to be any debate over that. So if you were to say there are two sexes, male and female, I, I don't think that can really be questioned because it's, it's a fact. It, it's true. And I would say the other is true with gender. But anyway, I can't say that anymore because that is now collectively, you can't say it apparently. So I'm not even allowed to say that on, on YouTube, right? This is, the, this is the absurdity of it, right? So I think if, you, if people are worried about this, I would just stick with the, the sex, right? Male, female, as opposed to getting into the whole gender thing. Because this is where the issues seem to be coming up from everything that I have been reading. So this is where it's all been going. And she was investigated. The police got involved. They've looked into it. They've investigated her. And again, you can read this article for yourself. It's, from, it's on Newsweek. I won't go into all the details on this. But, uh, you know, she put out a lot of tweets. April Fool's, only kidding. And uh, I won't read it out. Someone will report me probably. So anyway, we, we can, you can go through and read all of this. J.K. Rowling, hate law post, not criminal, police say. So this has come out in the last X amount of hours here, and it's decided that it wasn't criminal. So what she said was not criminal. And that uh, they will not be investigating further. Since the law came into effect on Monday, okay, this is two days, Police Scotland has received more than 3,000 complaints. 3 thousand complaints. But very interesting that surprised me, Rishi Sunak said he would not be drawn, would not be drawn on whether he supported her approach, saying it was not right for me to comment on police matters or individual matters. But he added, we should not be criminalizing people saying common sense things about biological sex. Clearly that isn't right. We have a proud tradition of free speech. So I was very surprised by that actually. And again, they've, and this is another thing, there's a new law coming out, which is going to uh, classify misogyny. And this is hatred or prejudice against women, uh, typically exhibited by men. So they, okay. It's generally accepted as a consequence of, a, of the patriarchy, the male dominated society. And it may be uh, applied to certain individuals as well as larger systems uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so this is now another thing that is looking to come in. They now want to bring in this new law, which covers as well misogyny. This is the way the world is now going. I am very concerned because I think Scotland's probably the pilot and it's going to roll out in more countries. In fact, we know if we have time, we can talk another day about Poland, which is about to pass something very similar, but could be even more strict. How's that going to go down with an 80% Catholic majority in the country? We'll see. Or conservative, at least. I'm very concerned. I'm very concerned uh, indeed. And as I've said a lot of times, I will not be sticking around. I've talked about this in the, in the private community as well a lot. I will not be sticking around if all these laws keep passing because it's just too risky. It's, it's, getting, it's getting too crazy. All right. Thanks for being online. Take care. God bless you all. And I'll see you tomorrow.